welcome back to this important lecture series. Uh, in Hindi, we call it as the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahosav. Means it is a very auspicious uh, occasion for us to celebrate the glorious uh, years of 75 uh, years of India's independence. A proud moment of all the Indians. And we are so thankful to you, uh, Dr. Jain, that you are part of now India's celebrations for the 75 years of independence. It is a proud moment for every Indian to celebrate this important event, which we are going to complete on 15th August. Uh, we have taken up many activities. Uh, recently, uh, we completed a document where uh, the 75,000 success stories have been documented, how they have doubled or tripled their uh, through the farm uh, cultivation and other, other things. Uh, there are many other activities we, uh, we have uh, started, many fairs we are conducting, many other uh, uh, parallel activities we have uh, undertaken. But this being uh, also to have 75 lectures from the eminent persons. Under this uh, lecture series, uh, this is the 73rd lecture, uh, we'll have two more lectures. So uh, uh, I think uh, we are so thankful to you for agreeing uh, uh, towards the completion. We are having a lecture of such an eminent person from such an important institute, uh, which is really uh, very close to India, this International Rights Institute. Uh, friends, uh, uh, I can just tell you, uh, Dr. G. He is the regional director of the Southeast Asia and Pacific CGIER and the Director General of International Rights Research Institute, which is the most important institute at the global level. And India uh, has taken a lot of advantage uh, from ERI uh, rice evolution, which we had in our country, the production, productivity, every kind of, you can see, even in the green revolution, you can see a lot of contribution uh, has been there. Uh, Dr. Jean is, uh, as I told you uh, presently, uh, he is the Director General of this very tour. He has over two decades of experience in leadership and, and has the expertise in developing policies for agriculture, food and rural development. He most recently served as a member of addressing food systems and building back uh, better a working group under the CGIER COVID-19 hub. As Director General of this important institute, IRI, he sets the global strategic di di directions of the institute and manages its the policies and decisions of the IRI Board of Trustees. He joined IRI in 2018 as head of the Agri-Food Policy Platform and before becoming the Director General, served as the Research Director external engagement and duty director general of our research. He, he worked as a policy officer, senior economist and program manager at the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations in the FAO. He earned his PhD in agricultural economics at the um, from NZ uh, and uh, uh, this CHEM. Uh, so thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Jean, for this, again I say uh, thank you very much for accepting this. And uh, friends, he is going to talk on a very important topic that is India and IRI, uh, future of rice based agri food systems. Uh, and in this, he is going to uh, talk about the, the uh, progress in the decades of the collaborations with the India and IRI, uh, which have been mutually beneficial for our country. So, with that, uh, I'll hand over uh, the platform to Dr. Jean. And I want to just say that this platform is being shared by many vice chancellors, our uh, Deputy Director General, Dr. T.R. Sarma, who is heading uh, the crop science. And uh, uh, from front, he is heading this rice uh, uh, related research also. Uh, we have the directors of our uh, National Rice Research Institute, uh, in, uh, Indian Rice Research Institute in uh, India, uh, many vice chancellors. And uh, to others, we just allowed to connect through the live streaming. So they are, and it is in halls where these students at large they are sitting and just uh, watching uh, this uh, important talk. So thank you very much, uh, and uh, I can just hand over to you uh, this platform, and I will request you to please uh, initiate your talk. Thank you. Thank you once again.
Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Agarwal, Deputy Director General for Education at ICAR. Thank you so much for this kind introduction and uh, the, the welcome remarks. I uh, really appreciate that. I would like to wish a very pleasant day to all of you who are attending this uh, session. Um, and uh, I'm very, of course, uh, honored and, and, and it's for me a real pleasure to be here today with you to uh, provide um, an overview uh, and hopefully very interesting details for all of us about the decades long uh, relationship for an even stronger cooperation between IRI and India at large, but more particularly with ICAR and through ICAR. So um, before I proceed, I also would like to um, thank uh, the Indian Council for Agricultural Research for organizing this um, lecture series, uh, as you just mentioned, in celebration of these very important milestones of India's 75th Independence uh, Day. Uh, it's really, it's really um, uh, uh, an honor for us to be part of these uh, celebrations and to have a chance to highlight uh, all the achievements that we, we, we have been able to uh, produce uh, over, the, over the years and decades uh, by uh, working together. I also would like to specifically, of course, in these uh, circumstances, uh, thank um, Dr. Triloshan Mohapatra, uh, Secretary, Department of Agriculture, uh, Agricultural Research and Education, and Director General ICAR for uh, the very long and productive collaboration that we had between IRI and ICAR over the years. And on this occasion, I would also like to acknowledge the, uh, the new secretary of the Department of Agricultural Research and Education, Director General of ICAR, Dr. Iman Patak. And uh, we also look forward to uh, an equally productive and stimulating uh, uh, collaboration and uh, his uh, able leadership. So um, uh, with that, I, I also would like to um, thank all those who in ICAR and the many institutes that ICAR uh, um, uh, represents, would like to thank all the scientists for their very stimulating engagements with IRI scientists uh, for, uh, you know, producing the, uh, this and creating this enabling environment for uh, more innovations and meaningful innovations for farmers. So we, with that in mind, uh, this lecture is very much to, uh, about um, trying to highlight what we have accomplished together and what is it that we think could pave the way for um, the uh, future relationship and the most uh, 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 specific targets that we may have in mind for our, our collaboration moving forward. Uh, let's go ahead with this lecture. Uh, I hope uh, uh, somebody can present, yes, thank you. Uh, maybe we go to the next slide. Yes, and, and this is just a quick uh, uh, slide to uh, uh, reflect on, uh, on our collaboration. IRI really, uh, has worked in close collaboration with many uh, partners in India and in particular with ICAR to ensure that uh, our work um, truly uh, contributes to uh, the stakeholders who need uh, uh, the, the, our support the most. And, and some of the outputs and outcomes include providing insights on rice markets uh, and policy future. What is it that we can expect in the, in the context of uh, a very rapidly changing world, regional and country environment uh, uh, and identify solutions that are context, time and scale specific. Also engaging with national partners and specifically um, policymakers to define credible and relevant policy scenarios for uh, the future. Uh, and the, in particular, the future of rice-based uh, food systems uh, while identifying the main driver of change. And of course, we will come back to that. We understand that there are many drivers that are specific to India with a rapidly growing economy. And, uh, and, um, and so that also drive the patterns of change in the agricultural sector. Um, and uh, we, we also hope that through, you know, the innovations, the technological innovation, but also institutional innovations that we uh, will uh, continue to produce together, uh, we will be able to uh, reach out 
to uh, 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 policymakers uh, through our uh, uh, technical advice uh, to develop these uh, um, context-specific solutions that will help uh, adapt uh, these rice-based active food systems to uh, the new context, and we will come back to that in, 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 in the next few slides. Next slide, please. So uh, quickly, a partnership with, with India dates back to the early seven, uh, 1960s, uh, and, and this has proven to be one of our most effective and long-standing collaborations to date. Um, these deep uh, collaboration help us to achieve some of our most significant milestones, not just in the agricultural sector of the country, but also in the, uh, the sub-region South Asia at large and beyond. So we will talk a, bit, a little bit about that. Next slide, please. So here is, here is a slide about you know, the, the timeline of our collaboration highlighting not just the initiatives or projects that have, uh, we have uh, uh, done together, but also the, the key personalities that paved the way for our, our, our decades long partnerships uh, that we have grown and, and progress over the years. So of course, uh, in 1967, I will not name all of them, but uh, uh, Dr. Benjamin Perry Paul, first Director General of ICOP became part of the EURI Board of Trustees, and that is for us a very key uh, milestone. After that, um, in 1982, uh, the formidable Dr. Swaminathan became EURI's for, uh, fourth Director General, and, and his legacy is still living today. Uh, uh, then uh, in 2006, uh, uh, the second International Rice Congress, as you can see, was held in New Delhi, attracting almost uh, 1,400 uh, participants from all over the world. And that was really a moment of exception where we could actually shed light on uh, rice science. In 2012, uh, Iderabad hosted the sixth uh, International Library uh, Rice uh, Symposium and was also a very important milestone for us, but also for the global rice community uh, at large. Um, in 2017 and 2018, uh, that was really uh, uh, exceptional. Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated the Resident Rice Film Laboratory in Erie headquarters and also Erie South Asia Regional Center uh, located in Varanasi. And so these, these really were, were uh, um, incredible. Uh, moments for, for ERIES uh, and uh, its collaboration with Indian partners. Last year, the ERIES speed breeding facility, which is the latest and most um, significant investment to um, improve our breeding techniques, uh, was inaugurating, inaugurated in, 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 uh, at Baranasi uh, at ISAC. And so uh, this was also a, a very uh, uh, a very critical development. Next slide, please. So uh, until today, we of course continue uh, working to get to bring value to our and particularly uh, small farmers, and we will I am still seeing the same slide. Is that is that only me, or or of uh, uh, watchers are also having the same problem? Yeah, we are seeing the same slide. <laughs> Please switch to the next slide. Okay, thanks. Uh, maybe we have a slight, a slight delay uh, in the in the way we see the, the slides. So, of course, here I wanted to highlight, you know, um, uh, uh, what relates to the Erie Rice Stream banks. Most of you already know about these Erie Rice Stream banks. Uh, 
that uh, the, the, the first contributor uh, is, is India with uh, uh, 17 thousands plus uh, of these accessions coming from India, which represent 30%. 13% of the total. That makes India the biggest contributors, followed by, by Laos, as you can see, uh, with above uh, 15,000 accessions stored in our facility. And I am saying that because this is basically the foundation for most of the work that we are doing on genetics. And so I want to come back to that later on. Next slide, please. Yeah, these accessions, as I was saying, are used to um, develop rice varieties that of course high yielding but also increasingly stress tolerant and can produce higher outputs or and sometimes exhibit superior uh, nutritional outcomes including uh, low, low glycemic index rice and we will talk about that a bit later uh, this is one of the most recent uh, innovation at ERI, the ability to produce and incorporate this characteristic in, in new and also existing rice varieties uh, to address uh, issues uh, uh, like diabetes, for example. Uh, uh, so in fact, according to a research title, as you can see here, a farm level impact uh, of the International Rice Gene Bank on improved rice varieties, and there is an evidence from Eastern India that shows that 45 to 75 uh, 77 percent of the genetic composition of an improved variety is, is actually coming uh, from uh, these uh, varieties stored in the in the in the gene bank, and we found that a 10 percent increase in the definite genetic contribution of the uh, international rice gene bank is as actually associated with a 27 percent increase in rice yields, which is which is absolutely significant. Um, next slide, please. So these accessions also continue to be fully utilized, of course, uh, uh, in, 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 of course, through our partnerships uh, with NARES, uh, the gem plants uh, uh, that we have disseminated jointly has had a net contribution of nearly 9% of uh, India's uh, annual total rice output. Uh, furthermore, as you can see on the first bullet, the overall contribution of Iris gems plants um, uh, based on high yielding uh, varieties to yield growth is around or above 18 uh, percent. So, so uh, um, financially the accessions uh, that ERI continues to save keep and develop into uh, high yielding varieties has contributed uh, over uh, 1.8 billion per year, per year to India's agricultural sector. So these achievements continue to signal the strong ties and, and substantial returns, uh, not only on investment in research, but also about the close collaboration between IRI and the government of India at large, but also with ICAR in particular. So it is our hope that, and our will, that we will not only keep this strong relationship, but also build on that to further develop uh, the, these, these very substantial you know, achievements and returns for farmers and for the economy in the decades to come. Next slide, please. So here, uh, and, 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 and one uh, other important product for our continued partnership are the, 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 of course, not only the, the science itself, but also the way we do our science. And here, play a key role. And we have built together a number of these facilities to, to, to help res support rice research and, and put, put you know, our scientists in, in, in conditions, enabling conditions that would actually help them to uh, produce uh, better science and, and achieve greater impact. So in Varanasi, for example, we have, as I said before, the ERI South Asia Regional Center uh, inaugurated, as I said, by Prime Minister Modi in 2018. And this uh, center, this facility houses a number of laboratories and working spaces that are instrumental in improving farmers' yields, in our opinion, and we have demonstrated that. And so this includes uh, the Center for, of Excellence for Rice Value Addition, that we call CERVA, uh, but also, as I mentioned before, the speed breeding facility, 
the, the computational bio, uh, biology laboratory. Um, and lastly, uh, the, the GIS, uh, Geographic Indication Systems uh, and Molecular Biolo Biology Lab, uh, among others. So these are really the, the, the key uh, labs that we are using to leverage our science and project it into uh, you know, uh, all, all the, the, the different streams of collaborations with our partners in India. Next slide, please. So next to uh, uh, ISOC, we also have a hub, what we call the South Asia hub located in Hyderabad. And uh, in this building, uh, uh, we established also several labs, uh, a molecular lab, um, that is endowed with almost, uh, all the most modern equipments and can handle most of the components of molecular breeding. We have the field-based um, rapid gen generation advancements facility that can help advance more than um, 50,000 lines uh, with three crop seasons. We also have the zinc uh, lab that can generate uh, zinc and several other macronutrients data uh, at uh, 300 lines per day. Uh, the head rice recovery lab uh, with two uh, specific Zakari machines, as they are called, uh, that can generate head rice recovery data at uh, 200, between 200 and 250 lines uh, per day. And then we have also the, the field uh, uh, blast, uh, um, the, this established field rice blast screening facility. Uh, uh, can uh, screen these uh, at least 2,000 2, lines per, per season uh, that can be phenotyped using virulent uh, strains. And then we also have the false uh, SMUT control uh, for control conditions based uh, uh, false nut phenotyping uh, following the established protocols um, uh, and uh, that can again uh, help uh, screens 100 lines at a time. So uh, the, these are substantial, you know, equipments and, and techniques, as well as, you know, all the science that goes around it that can really enable us to uh, uh, advance, progress uh, our ambition in terms of collaboration. Next to that, we also have the direct seeded uh, rice phenotyping facilities that have been recently established at the South Asia Hub at, um, on the Ikrisat campus. And this, this altogether completes the, the current, uh, the current tools and equipments that, that we have at uh, our disposal for our collaboration. Next slide, please. So we, we also have decentralized, as we call them, uh, uh, programs uh, and, and collaboration. So in several states, and I want to highlight just a few, one, for example, is in Odisha, uh, that includes, you know, uh, 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 drought and submerged tolerance rice varieties in the in, in seed systems. Uh, facilitating targeted uh, production and, and sale using uh, the most modern digital estimation tools that we call Seedcast uh, to balance demand and supply. Uh, then we have uh, also in Odisha developed this mapping of rice uh, for uh, 3.5 million hectares and uh, 2.2 uh, million hectares of rice fallow. Uh, systems in, in Odisha. And these rice fallow uh, are, we know, suitable for double cropping and have been characterized using resource mapping. Uh, we have also uh, uh, short duration pulses, for example, green gram, that have been tested and promoted for wide uh, scale adoption. Uh, in total, more than 3,000, 300,000 uh, farmers uh, have been impacted in Odisha by making site specific uh, uh, nutrient recommendations using our, our rice crop monitoring uh, uh, tool and improving precision with remote sensing based target yields. Uh, this also engaging or full engagement with state agencies and local partners uh, for, for uh, uh, scaling solutions. Uh, so in addition, we also established a farmer producer uh, company uh, in, in Odisha uh, with uh, uh, nearly 1,850 1, uh, women as members. And this company uh, uh, was incubated in Kalahandi uh, and it provides support for input services, um, uh, certified and, and branded seed, um, uh, but also uh, 
help uh, uh, identify solutions for production and, and recommendations for production, processing and sale, as well as retail services, um, uh, specifically for, for women. And, and, and this allows in turn to uh, empower uh, women and help them establish, uh, you know, more um, resident livelihoods, especially at the household level. So this we, is, is a very substantial achievement. Uh, next slide, please. We also have another example with ASAM, uh, which is this uh, uh, um, program to increase the productivity and profitability of, of small and marginal farmers in rice-based cropping systems under the ASAM Agribusiness Rural Transformation Project. It's called APART. And, and in this project, we have, as you can see, four objectives, uh, very, very uh, briefly, enhancing the adoption of stress tolerance varieties and strengthening uh, seed supply systems, very important, uh, raise productivity, profitability and resource use efficiency of rice-based systems, strengthen post-harvest management, uh, including service economy, very important also, and then develop uh, extrapolation domains of cropping systems. These, these really are, 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 um, are mutually reinforcing objectives, of course, as, as the, the, the program unfolds. Next slide, please. Uh, uh, so more details on the part, and I won't be long here, but let, allow me to say a few words about uh, for example, mainstreaming stress tolerance varieties, rice varieties. Uh, uh, as you know, um, uh, it is very important that uh, these varieties are uh, uh, disseminated and adopted by farmers at, re at, the, at a very large scale. And so, for example, flood tolerance varieties occupy uh, um, uh, 0 0.3 million hectares in Assam already with a yield advantage of 1.2 ton per hectare, uh, with uh, new, eight new rice varieties that have been introduced through these um, uh, apart projects. We also introduced the well-known um, Bina Dan 11 and the, the Seed Without Border Agreement, and we will come back to that. This is a very popular variety uh, in the borough season in particular. And uh, we have also managed to already strengthen seed systems by uh, uh, you know, uh, supplying these stress tolerant variety through public and private partnerships uh, in key in key areas of uh, of intervention of this of this uh, apart program. Uh, of course, you have other components. Then they won't, don't won't, don't want to be too long on that. But maybe you can read or, or browse through that, uh, and we can provide more details. But make, mainstreaming mechanization, seed to seed. Our team uh, we, has worked with partners, local partners, to introduce mechanized transplanting, but also direct city to rice and develop um, uh, nursery entrepreneurship. And this, this is, of course, really promising. And uh, the project also allowed uh, to improve targeting through geospatial analysis, uh, in particular, uh, as I said before, mapping rice fallow and, and, and flood prone areas and, and targeting interventions through climate smart uh, or using climate smart technology. This ambitious and large scale uh, project also has a substantial capacity development and knowledge dissemination component relying on, for example, uh, seven training facility centers in particular uh, located there in this, in this state. So we hope, I'm saying that because we hope, uh, because we find this, this apart program very successful already, although it's not finished, we hope we can replicate this model uh, in other states of India and, and find the necessary partnerships to do so. Next slide, please. So uh, another initiative that has been a priority for us, uh, in particular in recent months, of course, uh, because climate change in, uh, is in everybody's mind at the moment and, and for probably for the month and just to come, or decades to come. Uh, and this, this program is about securing food systems in, in Asia mega deltas. And so the countries in focus include India uh, and more specifically uh, the, the Ganges Delta. Uh, um, so as we all know, um, deltas are, are food baskets uh, for many countries in Asia, uh, and they are under substantial uh, threat due to uh, climate change. 
So it is, it is of utmost importance for us to maintain uh, social ecological integrity of these very fragile environments and to help adapt to climatic and other stresses. And our ambition is to protect and when it's possible, restore, restore that, that, uh, uh, Delta landscapes integrity with a view to support human prosperity and well-being. And, and this, of course, the sine qua non condition is making sure that we understand the mechanisms that are at, at play uh, to, to, uh, to um, identify possible uh, uh, solutions. So while removing systemic barriers to the scaling of these um, uh, uh, transformative technologies and practices that could be developed to address uh, these threats uh, at community, national and regional levels, uh, we understand that all these are key, but we also need to work on, on behavioral and policy dimensions uh, to address the root causes of the problems that these deltas faces, and in, in, in particular, the Ganges Delta. So this is something that we really want to um, promote and push forward uh, uh, in a collaboration in, the, in the, the, the years to come. Next slide, please. So as I was saying, new and innovative technologies are indeed important in revolutionizing the, um, the, the rice sector. But without uh, a succeeding generation of scientists who are skilled and passionate, uh, dedicated to the, to the sector and very creative, farming practices in the sector as a whole, so this is why the next um, point in this lecture is about training the, the, the future generation of scientists. Uh, and that is a priority for IRI and India uh, has been a big part of this effort uh, in the last decades. And we want to continue to do that together. Uh, so next slide. So training and capacity development for agriculture is one of IRI's main mandate. As I said, this was um, further institutionalized when we established IRI education, now located in Varanasi and, uh, and serving the world. Uh, it, its goal is to produce holistic and integrated um, uh, learning solutions to address uh, potential gaps in knowledge uh, and expectation uh, but also to revamp, you know, uh, modernize this knowledge when for, for, for already well-established scientists. So uh, with uh, a full strong educational innovation. So in area education, uh, as you can see here, we, we, we use um, um, five main modalities of intervention for capacity development. Um, these are, uh, as I said, available uh, at the ISARC in Varanasi. Uh, so, very traditional short and long courses on science, technology transfer and leadership uh, on our five impact areas, but also training of scholars and youth engagement via uh, undergraduate and graduate programs, fellowships and enterprise uh, development offerings. We also have more recently developed online learning in, in, in synchronous and asynchronous formats with open educational resources and, and online and blending models. Uh, we also have uh, uh, at the disposal of our partners and, and, and alumni uh, knowledge platforms such as the Rice Knowledge Bank and other digital knowledge management and sharing tools. Finally, uh, at the very end of, of the slide, you find the advisory and capacity development initiative using a systems approach where we we, we intend to co-create strategies, frameworks, and needs assessment plans for uh, with our partners and stakeholders. So these are really the 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 the, the, the key um, uh, ways of um, uh, uh, interacting uh, with, um, as I said, established scientists, but also younger uh, uh, scientists. Next slide, please. So just just a few a few numbers, and I won't be too long on that. But the, uh, the, the the work that we did paved the way for a number of substantial achievements, at least that we are quite you know pride, proud of. Uh, in 2021, uh, uh, for example, we were able to train more than uh, one 1,200 senior level participants. So uh, you know, uh, direct level and above, train more than uh, 42,000 beneficiaries who are various research projects. 
um, uh, not only in India, uh, in, in the region and beyond. Uh, also develop you know, e-learning modules for short-term courses um, and, and, um, and, and approach and integrate in this kind of you know, community of rice science, uh, uh, new uh, 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 scientists that are increasingly attracted to uh, uh, what could be achieved through rice-based agri-food systems. And we also launched, as you can see, uh, the, the app version of the Rice Knowledge Bank in English and, uh, and Assamese. Uh, for those who are interested in this in this version, next slide, please. Uh, uh, also, uh, able to uh, reach beneficiary beyond India, as I was saying, with uh, utmost support from our local partners. And you can see here the distribution. Like we hope in the future, we can have more balanced distribution between female and male uh, beneficiaries. But that is something that is in the in, uh, in we are working on. Next slide, please. We have also uh, 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 so far covered you know, technologies and innovation as well as training and uh, the next generation of scientists and researchers. Another important aspect for, for, for delivering impact, of course, is putting efficient research products, procedures uh, uh, in place uh, so that our stakeholders can have access to our innovation in the easiest and most uh, uh, direct way possible. And so at Erie, we are also focusing on what we call the process, how we actually uh, um, make the best use of the various platforms, tools, equipments that we have. So next slide. So these, these, these models that we have developed at Erie and that we are happy to share with everybody uh, include what is listed here. So very, very modern and, and highly advanced breeding and, uh, and breeding services. Uh, business development, portfolio management, technology transfer, as I said just before, e education and training, uh, extensive and active role in precision farming and more. So what I'm trying to say here is that we don't see this as, uh, as, as linear topics. Uh, we really see this as integrated solutions, mutually reinforcing aspects that when we bring that together, really we create this uh, enabling environment for uh, uh, scientists to thrive. Uh, next slide. So um, uh, here is is just a, 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 a little bit on 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 a dimension that is very dear to me, uh, um, which relates to um, the policy space uh, understood as you know the necessary um, the necessary element. Uh, uh, in addition to what we can do in capacity development and innovations of all times to really scale innovation at the national level, but also regional and, and so forth. So we need to also concentrate our efforts on the policy work. And this is certainly something that we are very uh, conscious of uh, for India and that we have done quite effectively uh, in recent, in recent months. And we want to do a lot more about that. And next slide. So, one example, and I cannot cite them all, but one example of the outcomes of these um, policy uh, innovations, I could say, is the Seed Without Border Initiative, which is a multi-country seed sharing agreement that ERI initiated, uh, and that uh, uh, in, intends to deliver new and better uh, high yielding uh, uh, varieties, but also climate resilience rice varieties to reach farmers more rapidly through the establishment of common parameters uh, for a varietal release. Uh, in other words, the, the idea is to um, avoid a repetition of the same you know, uh, procedures for validating uh, the commercialization of uh, a number of uh, varieties that have already been uh, validated in one country. So India, as often, is one of the first countries that actually adopted this innovation uh, and has joined the, the agreement along with Bangladesh and Nepal back in 2014. In 2017, the Seed Without Border initiatives had grown to include um, uh, so Cambodia, Sri Lanka, Myanmar, and Bhutan. And we also have now a number of countries, you know, knocking the door. Vietnam, the Philippines uh, have expressed interest in joining the agreement in the near future, and we hope it will happen in the in the next few months. So it is estimated that this kind of agreement and this we see without border in particular 
shorten seed evaluation and, 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 and varietal release in participating countries by five uh, or four, five or six years in some cases. So that's substantial for farmers. So uh, uh, just an illustration of what could be accomplished through innovative policy thinking. Uh, next slide, please. Aside from uh, uh, national partners, very quickly, we also collaborate with other CGIR centers and beyond the CGIR to create this kind of strategic policy options using analysis of global, regional, and national uh, uh, trends. Uh, so we have models. I don't want to be too, too long about that. But it is very important, in particular at this moment uh, of our history, common history, where we see that markets are, 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 are being challenged, where, where uh, instability prevails. Uh, having some clarity on the possible scenarios or where the rice sector is going and what is likely to happen depending on the kind of policy decisions that could be made and the kind of reactions that markets may have, this is certainly something that uh, is going to help us devise, you know, what would be the, 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 the optimal uh, um, uh, solutions that we could envisage for, uh, for the benefits of our farmers. So aside from India, Models uh, like the ones we have at ERI are being utilized in countries like Japan, Taiwan, Vietnam, uh, and so on, Egypt, Kenya, uh, of course, Brazil and the US, many, among many others. So this is, is something I just wanted to signal because it is something that um, we need to increasingly integrate in the way we, um, uh, we, we think about our technical solutions. Next slide, please. Of course, ERI also works closely with countries in Asia and Africa uh, to foster South-South collaboration and deliver advanced research, education and services to improve uh, crop production, grain quality, nutritional uh, value of rice, uh, more uh, uh, prosperity for, for farmers, and, 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 and of course also as a assigned policy coordination. So, as you all know, India plays a big part in these efforts, has always been a strong advocate for South-South collaboration, and being the host of the Erie South Asia Regional Center in Varanasi, of course, this is the platform that we can and will leverage to accelerate the, 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 the collaboration through South-South uh, uh, um, programs. So via this facility, we, we continue to... Um, uh, to uh, partner, invite our national stakeholders to uh, 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 put together a number of uh, uh, ideas to enhance farmers' knowledge and practices with a view to ultimately increase uh, the income of farmers, not just in India, while this is being a policy, a clear policy objective of doubling farmers' income, but we also want to do that in neighboring regions, including Africa, of course. Next slide. So another important aspect of our work is our mandate to uh, advocate for gender. I already very quickly mentioned that, gender and social equity. Through ERI and India partnership, we design technologies, innovations, technical, but also institutional innovations and practices that support and encourage the participation of women and youth in the agri-food sector. And, and this is, of course, a very important aspect of our work, and it will continue to, uh, to, 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 to be in the, in, the, in the coming months and years. For example, next slide, please. We pursued initiative to enhance women's access to technologies. Uh, uh, we know that sometimes it's oftentimes it is difficult for women to access technology in the same way that uh, male farmers can. And so, uh, uh, and, and that is only with a way to make farming for, for women who want to do it uh, uh, also easier and more profitable. We also want to prioritize capacity building for women and youth that aims to promote uh, this notion of entrepreneurship in seed production and marketing, for example, or also engage with women in processing and value addition of rice-based products. So always keeping in mind what are the specific conditions that will attract women and youth to actually benefit from uh, uh, all these, uh, uh, these programs and also from the market itself. Next slide, please. Iri is, is also in the midst of transitioning to one CGIR, and that is also one way of looking into the future. Uh, 
it is one of the 12 centers that have decided to form this one CGIR uh, building on the, the traditional CGIR, which is about you know, a stronger organization that has uh, ultimately more global impact. And this will largely, we hope, and we, we, we are committed to making that happen. Uh, 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 to to actually more more largely benefit uh, farmers in, in in a growing number of countries uh, where we work, uh, including India. Given that India is one priority country uh, 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 under the one CGIR, so uh, next slide, please. So so that is a bit you know stated the obvious for this audience, but uh, uh, it is worth recalling. Uh, when we talk about India, we talk about the, 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 the third, in, in the coming years, the third largest economy by, by 2030, as well as uh, already uh, a major uh, food export, uh, not only in rice, but in many other commodities. So uh, uh, India is a key player uh, and is, is, a, uh, is a, a, a market maker. So uh, India is rapidly developing its own ambitious, um, uh, ambitious um, ambitions. I wanted to say ambitions uh, in terms of overseas uh, uh, development program uh, of assistance with a major uh, focus on science and technology cooperation, as we know, uh, in the field of agricultural development, but also on other aspects, making sure that it can benefit from this kind of global weight. And so uh, IRI uh, intends to uh, play a role in that and support uh, India's ambition. Um, as we also intend to support uh, uh, India's agenda in South Asia, uh, trying to uh, uh, leverage in all the excellent science that has been developed in India, uh, but could also benefit the neighboring countries. And as I was saying before, beyond the region, Africa. Uh, India has a future in Africa, and Iri is, is uh, uh, also a, a player in, in Sub-Saharan Africa with a, a growing portfolio uh, and uh, an increasing importance of uh, uh, um, you know, rice uh, as, as a commodity in Africa. We all know that there is a large dependence on imports uh, with a, a, a really heavy uh, import bills that uh, Africans have to uh, uh, pay uh, every year. And the ambition is, of course, for most of, uh, of these countries to increase their level of uh, self sufficiency. Um, and ERI, together with India, can assist achieve uh, uh, these goals um, in Africa and help. Uh, um, transfer a number of these um, uh, uh, technologies, but also knowledge and practices uh, that could um, uh, uh, benefit uh, uh, Africa, but also uh, um, put uh, uh, put India in a, uh, in in a very favorable situation in terms of influence. Um, so Erie will work uh, uh, together with India and. ICAR in particular, to develop this kind of uh, comprehensive program. Um, uh, and um, we, we want to do that through our um, ISARC, uh, uh, Varanese-based uh, facility. Next slide. So here, here is, is a glimpse of, of what we, I wanted to say about the future. Uh, uh, Iran and India will continue to work to develop, uh, together to develop more strategic and concrete collaborations on a number of areas. And so we have already covered the very traditional areas of, of collaboration, and mostly genetic innovation, agronomy, and so on. And, but we need to add to that. And one, one aspect that we need to actually um, uh, do uh, uh, or, 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 yeah, more of is more concrete, um, strategic and concrete collaboration on, on, on climate change. Uh, we know that this is now. Uh, it's now that we need to actually um, revisit our, our, our programs and make sure that everything is seen through the lens of climate change. Uh, climate change adaptation, but also mitigation. We know that rice plays a key role in, in mitigation issues, uh, given you know, its uh, role in uh, methane emissions, in particular, in particular when it is uh, uh, irrigated rice. Um, so uh, we will focus our efforts on, on, on monitoring, 
reporting and verification tools to support rice carbon credits. Uh, and so that includes greenhouse gas calculator for rice that IRI has developed sector. But we also have um, another uh, 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 tool that is called carbon footprint assessment for rice value chain, uh, or also uh, mapping suitability uh, of the alternate wetting and drying practice for rice production. Um, we have another uh, uh, tool uh, that we can use, which is called cost impact analysis for emission reductions project, compare, and broad base, uh, 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 broad scale farm activity monitoring tool, uh, rice mode. So these are, uh, this is just a menu of the various uh, 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 tools uh, and, and, and knowledge base, you know, uh, uh, um, things that we can leverage to uh, really progress our shared ambition uh, on uh, doing better vis-a-vis -vis, uh, climate change. But we also have um, uh, to present management options to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and in particular methane, as I was saying, to adapt, um, but also mitigate climate change. Such, uh, and so that includes a number of um, practices uh, that are uh, quite... Uh, I mean, that are already well established, but would, would uh, deserve to be uh, um, uh, developed at scale. So laser land leveling, alternate wetting and drying, I was saying, machine transplanting, uh, but also, and that's particularly the case in India, in some region of India, at least uh, and around New Delhi, the rice straw management options to avoid, you know, straw burning, for example, but only contributes to, to uh, um, you know, uh, these, these emissions and also making, you know, particles very, uh, um, very difficult for the people who live uh, in these regions where uh, straws are burned. We also uh, want to focus on policy solutions to promote the right production and market incentives, uh, minimizing, as I was saying, environmental health and social externalities. So how is it that we combine the, the the, the technical solutions with some uh, right policy uh, decisions and reforms uh, to make sure that the farmers are incentivized to adopt, to adopt these, these, uh, these innovations. Uh, we also look forward to um, collaborating more intensively with India on these uh, smart policies to uh, uh, overall support food system transformation. So providing technical support to uh, our national partners in particular uh, ICAR uh, way to transition, you know, to a low carbon rice production. And we have started that already with a few countries in Southeast Asia in particular. And our ambition is to also do that uh, in, in a growing number of countries, including India. Uh, and so um, we wish to help to develop um, plans uh, for implementation and measure impact uh, via, via a, a series of measuring reporting and verification tools uh, that can help in making decisions about uh, uh, financing and expanding uh, uh, um, a variety of um, mitigation techniques. Uh, and I have mentioned alternate putting and drying, but there are, there are others. Finally, ERI is also um, about promoting uh, farm diversification uh, to increase nutrition security and resilience to climate change. So of course we are conscious that Rice is there to stay and is going to be part uh, of, of the diets for, for, for the decades to come in many, in many areas of the world and in particular in Asia. But there will be landscapes where rice will be more uh, uh, critically part of the solutions and other landscapes where, where rice um, may not be, you know, uh, part, of, and this, this part of the solution. And this needs to be uh, prepared, anticipated, and we need to actually organize this transition and have the right, again, uh, policy scenarios and programs in place to um, uh, anticipate these changes. And a recent example uh, in includes the, the, the work that we have accomplished uh, uh, um, in India, and that is um, um, captured in an article uh, published in Nature Food, where uh, authors uh, found that the uh, transfer money gains uh, in wheat yields, uh, for example, are only possible in Eastern India if rice and wheat are managed as a coupled system. 
And uh, that is very interesting, of course, in itself, but it also tells us that better management of the annual cropping calendar will pay dividends uh, for food security, profitability uh, for farmers, and climate resilience now and in the future. So uh, this is just an example, but also uh, can be seen as a foundation for adaptation to progressive climate change and making sure that we, we use our science to, to, to uh, uh, really accompany the most indeed the, the transition and transformation of our food systems. Next slide, please. And I think we are getting, yeah, that's the last, I think, slide about the, uh, the future, as I said, um, ERI has joined uh, uh, the 1CG and uh, together with other centers, we want to form a unified system organization that aims to um, have a more, uh, as I said, extensive impact in the region where we operate and in India in particular. I repeat, India is, is a core country uh, and many initiatives uh, that uh, the 1CG has launched are already uh, uh, either about to be implemented or already implemented in, in India. And under this unified CGIR, the scientific innovations for food, land, and water transformation uh, uh, can be, uh, the ambition is about that, uh, deploy faster this innovation, making sure that this, this is adopted uh, uh, at very large scale at a reduced cost uh, to have the, 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 the greater impact uh, uh, in very uh, in very specific locations. So the new CGIR is about all that, is what you see on this slide, um, uh, the promise of a holistic approach to ensure that we address realities on the ground uh, uh, with a bottom-up, as I try to explain in this, le explain in this lecture, uh, uh, bottom-up and locally customized solution, um, but also leveraging individual and collective expertise capabilities and resources, making sure that we, we, we use the networks that we have established, the networks with ICAR, for example, and the various NARES to uh, contribute solutions that address the key challenge that are adapted to very specific context, in particular, uh, uh, the, the, the state level or even below the state level. An extensive network that allows uh, us to cultivate, as I said, strong relationship with the national and regional groups, but more importantly, the promise that we will work more effectively with the private sector and the civil society, but to, to, to really understand how is it that science can be more rapidly uh, used and, and integrated in this kind of, uh, um, in all the, the, the way uh, the private sector uh, and civil society organizations operate. So really make sure that it is science uh, for impact. Uh, so, um, uh, and also leveraging, of course, a strong pre presence in all over uh, Asia. So we are hopeful that uh, in the next phase of the partnership, ERI will also be the entry point to um, access uh, a, a wider uh, array of expertise, knowledge uh, that is currently available in the CGIR. Uh, ERI, um, is a hub for, uh, for uh, Southeast Asia, but can of course also um, become the, the entry point for uh, our collaboration with our Indian partners to uh, make sure that we fully leverage uh, what, uh, what uh, the, the, the CGI can bring to India. Next slide. So, as, as and I, I think this one is the last, uh, uh, through uh, all this collaboration, I would like to emphasize two points. Um, as you see in the man scratching his head here, uh, uh, what, what, what is it that uh, uh, we have to do to really remain at the top? Uh, you know, what I, what I, uh, I call the Northern Eastern angle of, you know, uh, um, uh, science and innovation. Uh, new strategies and innovations are independent. We know that, and one can have strategies in place that makes uh, them more innovative as an organization. But uh, similarly, one can also innovate to have more relevant strategies that fulfill the mandate of the organization. At the same time, strategy make one rise above the competitors, while uh, uh, innovations make one unique among the competitors. So the best way in my opinion, to succeed is to combine the power of the two approaches and, and strategize for innovations. 
So we strongly believe that our collaboration with India is built upon this uh, framework that I just tried to, to, to describe, and that we want to continue with this kind of partnership uh, to be able to um, achieve even more in the future uh, for uh, as a result of our, our, our collaboration. So that's called advantageous novelty. And so we will, we will be keeping that in mind as we um, uh, engage uh, with our partners in India uh, in the in the in the future. Next slide. That's the, really the last one. So, of course, this is uh, uh, it is no contest that India has uh, hugely um, contributed to the agri food systems of South Asia and beyond. I was mentioning India's impact, India's agriculture uh, impact in the world, uh, and so this slide shows that. Uh, uh, you know how much impact India has had in the global agricultural sector. India is the largest, uh, has the largest, you know, national agricultural systems in the world. With uh, I mean, for ICAR, 111, if I if I'm well informed, ICAR uh, institutes and 71 agricultural universities among the most most prominent ones. Uh, they have also had a, a non-contestable impact on national food security. So India, as we, we know, has increased food grains by, by, by sixfold, in uh, 5.6 exactly times from 1950s to uh, uh, the end of, uh, uh, I mean, around 2017-18. That's, that's a formidable uh, uh, transformation. Um, their commitment to research is also in parallel. One great example to highlight is, of course, the, the provision of um, test to test location specific agricultural technologies across the country, India, via the, the Krishi Vigyan Kendra. Uh, and and uh, India is also, um, uh, has also promoted excellence in higher education in agriculture, with many Indian agricultural scientists being. Uh, internationally acknowledged and praised, and sometimes hired uh, at IFRI, for example, and and um, additionally, nearly nearly twenty percent of the world food uh, uh, the, the world food price laureates uh, are uh, of um, Indian ascent or, or heritage. So it is definitely um, an honor uh, uh, for IRI and for me in particular to be invited uh, today. Uh, before uh, this audience, all our colleagues, uh, partners, um, to pay tribute to India's uh, uh, science, uh, uh, research achievements uh, on the occasion of this celebration of India's 75th Independence Day. Um, it has been an honor for Erie to be working uh, throughout these years uh, with you all uh, uh, and, and develop what I have tried to show. I mean, and, and, and one hour is not enough uh, uh, to, to demonstrate, you know, all what we, we have been able to accomplish together, but also all what is left for us to uh, accomplish, uh, to address the uh, future, uh, the current challenges and make sure that we reinvent ourselves uh, to uh, also recreate the conditions for another revolution that may not be called the green revolution, but the new revolution of food systems. And, and, and we are in that together. So we really look forward to a future with many more collaborations with, with you. Uh, we only have one hope actually, and it is to build on this legacy that I have tried to depict here and further develop our collaboration in the years and, and, and decades to come. Uh, with that, I end uh, my presentation, uh, 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 and I'm really grateful to all of you for listening and happy to um, uh, receive any question if you have. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Zin. Too. It's a wonderful talk, and I think one of the finest talk uh, about the IRI and India collaboration, uh, especially the ICR has been a great beneficiary with this IRI uh, collaboration. Uh, in, uh, you have given many commitments uh, and many uh, areas for the collaborations uh, so that uh, in 2030, uh, India can become really the third largest economy in the world. 
thank you very much for uh, supporting India and uh, especially during this uh, India's independence and this 75th years of independence. So it's uh, sure that for the food security, this, uh, this kind of collaboration with IRI is going to be of immense help to India. And especially in the, uh, in the area of higher education, because I am the Deputy Director General for the Higher Education. Uh, we are sending students to IRI. They come with a great knowledge. Uh, you must have seen from many universities, the students are uh, being uh, sent uh, under this National Agricultural Higher Education Project of the World Bank. And uh, there's a long list of uh, many more uh, uh, teachers and students uh, to IRI and to have the interaction there. Uh, uh, Dr. Jean, uh, we have a few questions, if you are just allow. Uh, our Deputy Director General Crop Science, Dr. T.R. Sama, he is interested in knowing uh, uh, the status of the C4 rice Also, he wants to know uh, that are you promoting the herbicide tolerance rice varieties for DSR system? And has he developed uh, such varieties? Okay, that allows me to to uh, to dig into some of these uh, aspects that I may not have touched. So you, the, the first question, C4 rice, uh, it is true that Erie has uh, invested substantial, you know, um, uh, um, efforts uh, in uh, C4 rice research uh, with mixed results, uh, to be honest. And so uh, we have um, uh, the, the program. Is we we are we are currently uh, contemplating you know a, a situation where we really want perhaps to phase out the research in C4 rice, not having substantial uh, or enough results. So most of our research has taken place uh, with our Chinese partner, uh, and uh, we have um, uh, substantial evidence that. Uh, it would be uh, it would be costly and not necessarily uh, uh, providing the returns we, we expect to continue uh, on this collaboration. However, uh, the door is not totally closed. Uh, our scientists are, are still are still uh, looking into that. Um, we I could put to whoever has had the question if there is a very specific interest in contact with uh, uh, our, our scientists who are. Uh, specifically working on C4 rice, and also to share some of the of the research results that are quite interesting, yeah, to be honest. But uh, it's not only as I was trying to say in my lecture, not only about um, what is interesting scientifically. It is also what is actually uh, uh, um, likely to be profitable, and yeah. so we are we are looking into. Uh, uh, technical options that can certainly rapidly improve the, uh, the the situation of farmers. So, of course, as always, and you being scientists, we learn a lot from these processes. But uh, sometimes, uh, well, we don't get the results we expect, and I think C4 rice is one of that. Um, um, the second question, I think, was about herbicide tolerant uh, uh, varieties. Uh, uh, yes, uh, yeah. The context of DSR. To be honest, I don't know. <laughs> so I really, I, I really have to go back to some of my of my scientists uh, to see whether this is an area. I think so, but I don't want to say something that is wrong. Uh, so I, I take note of the question and I can certainly revert back. Uh, we have a full team in, in our breeding uh, uh, um, department working on that, but also agronomists. And I know there are many uh, uh, aspects of tolerance that are being looked at, whether herbicides is the one that is uh, on, on top of the list or is in the pipeline. I really, I really cannot answer authoritatively on that and apologies for that. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, there is another question by uh, Dr. Priyanka Das. Uh, what are the prospects of rice bran uh, as human food? Can it be low-cost solution on nutrition prevention? Yes, absolutely. And that's an excellent question, actually. So uh, that allows me to, uh, to touch upon a very important uh, aspect of our, our rice research. Uh, uh, for us, an increasingly Rice is not only the grain, right? It is, it is the, the whole plant, but also uh, the whole uh, environment 
uh, of the of the plant. Uh, and so we we are certainly looking, and we have a program on rice bran uh, to um, always the same idea: uh, add value, add value to uh, what farmers uh, can uh, really uh, market, but at the same time make sure that we provide uh, more nutritious food from the consumers. So this aspect is being looked at. Uh, we have research that is uh, underway. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, there is a, a, a paper that is in preparation on, on, on that about the various uses of the, the brand. And so uh, again, same, same answer as before. Uh, this is uh, uh, clearly an area of work at Erie. Uh, also an area uh, where we want to collaborate with others. So whoever has asked the question is most welcome to follow up with me or any of, our, 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 of my colleagues to uh, really uh, look into that and see what is it that we can uh, uh, collaborate more. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, one of our vice chancellor from the Kerala University, he is interested uh, in knowing what are the the three top priority area for the future linkages with India uh, from the, uh, the the three the three top uh, priority areas topics. yeah so you you said India you didn't say ICAR uh, so it's India so, they are right nice. yeah and so we we we, we certainly have. Uh, uh, three main uh, um, ob objectives. Uh, so it depends on how you, you want to look at it. Do you want to look at it from the, the science perspective? And, and uh, certainly one is genetics. Uh, the other one is, is all that relates uh, to uh, agronomy. And uh, the third one is what relates to uh, um, uh, market uh, uh, and, and market systems and policy environments. So that's one way that is more, uh, you know, the uh, uh, disciplinary aspects. So that are the three main objectives that we have. But we also can look at the impact areas. So for Erie, the number one priority is prosperity. So making sure that uh, through technologies, through capacity development, through uh, uh, these uh, policy frameworks, we can uh, achieve higher income for farmers, number one. Number two, uh, it has to do with uh, um, what we have uh, all to uh, realize now is uh, uh, climate change. Uh, making sure that the solutions that we have are the ones that will be uh, 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 providing the benefits we expect under climate change. And uh, as we are all know now, this is something that will only uh, become uh, more and more uh, uh, prevalent, stringent, on all, upon all of us, how is it that we address uh, the climate change effects at farm level? So that's the second one. It goes together with nature, uh, you know, all the environmental impact of uh, of um, uh, rice production. Uh, and I would like to hear mention water, uh, uh, water use, and water use efficiency. That's that's the uh, number number two in terms of uh, impact area. And, and, uh, and number three, as all these aspects of uh, equity, uh, uh, inclusiveness and equity, making sure that, for example, uh, small farmers are, are still uh, uh, being considered, uh, that we also involve a number of uh, vulnerable, uh, vulnerable uh, uh, um, uh, communities or even individuals or, or, or families uh, to make sure that the, the various uh, uh, technical responses and policy responses that we, we propose are inclusive. Uh, and that would be the third, uh, the third area. Thank you. Thank you, Zin. Uh, may I request uh, Dr. T.R. Sarma, after Deputy Director General, Crop Science, uh, to say a few words on behalf of uh, ICI. Uh, good afternoon to all. Thank you very much, uh, Jean, for an excellent talk. We, uh, we really enjoyed it, particularly it's my area of research, rice, for the past 20 years I'm working on rice. And I really enjoyed what you have discussed today. And we know that india iri collaboration goes back to 60s, which you have really talked about. We had very historical 
cultivars like IR8 and IR64. IR64, I think, is a mega variety of rice which which include which contains six genes for blast resistance. And still, this is one of the predominantly grown varieties in country. And uh, the areas which you have talked about, particularly the India Iri collaboration for the future of rice and rice-based agri-food system. Uh, this, this was a, a very important topic and uh, I'm sure that uh, all of us has sitting here in this particular talk have enjoyed it. And the most important thing is that uh, the topic which we structured in such a way that yeah. starting from timeline of milestones and then collaboration or uh, how we are collaborating on different front and India, India's contribution to Iri's rice chain bank, that, that is one of the most important and significant contribution of India in case of Iri. Besides contribution of genomic resources to varietal development program, that, that has really given us a very important highlights of how genetic resources can be utilized for breeding high yielding varieties. And uh, the, the another thing which uh, we have really seen today is the state of the art facilities which you have developed at uh, Varanasi Center of ISARC. And these are really the facilities which probably National Agriculture Research System will also make use of uh, in our own breeding programs. We have already discussed with uh, the director of the institute with Dr. Singh. And, uh, and uh, we have made a plan that how best ways we can make use of these facilities. Otherwise, uh, the reason these are the one of the best facilities probably we have got it. And then comprehensive research programs specifically for Odisha and Assam are really worth mentioning here, which you have talked about. And I'm sure that uh, the, the, this all our audiences which are, are benefited from this. Uh, one of the india iri collaboration which I always highlight in most of the meetings is of human resource development program, which is, I would say, is the flagship program in which India has benefited for the past more than 65 years and still continue to benefit, particularly in new plant breeding technologies, which probably uh, you will definitely uh, make sure that the training of new scientists in the areas of genome editing, genomic selection, marker assist, genome-wide association mappings, and also climate uh, resilient varieties development programs. Uh, and most importantly, how database can be managed of these varieties, that, that particularly the breeding uh, database. And these uh, areas would definitely help in our future programs. And I'm looking for uh, ERI for more effective collaboration in the areas which you have mentioned, particularly in rice carbon credit and reducing of uh, greenhouse gas emissions and particularly the nutritional security of the country. That's very important for us. Besides that, in our earlier meeting, I also talked about that we should also think of increasing India's capability in export rice potential. We, we are now exporting rice. We, have, we are looking for the export market and how IRI can contribute in developing Japonica type of rice in India, which can be exported to other Southeast Asian countries. So these areas are really very, very important. And I am sure that with your leadership and the leadership in India, this partnership of IRI and India will definitely go further. And we will be having a very good symbiotic relationship in, in, in the future too. So thank you very much. On behalf of ICR, I would like to thank you for your excellent presentations. Yeah. And I'm really honored to have you. So thank you once again, uh, Dr. T.R. Samaji and uh, Dr. Jean uh, for this wonderful talk. And our all rice workers have been greatly benefited. Uh, this lecture is being stored on ICR uh, website uh, for the future. Our students, our scientists uh, can listen to it even later on. And this works as a 
uh, as an educational tool for uh, for the students uh, for the future uh, reference. Uh, the talk which we have given, uh, I think, any topic uh, of the collaboration, every topic, whether it's education, whether it's a uh, carbon trading, whether it's a uh, research research transformation, every point has been covered nicely. So thank you very much once again, and uh, I would like to thank all all the vice chancellors, our DDG, our uh, all the professors, teachers, scientists for attending this lecture. Uh, on uh, this Zoom platform and on this live sync platform. So thank you once again. See you again. Namaskar. Thank you.